Well, today I'm painting my house. You can see it behind me. I'm in the fields out behind my house, and uh, I'm not so much drawn to the house itself, as it's um, obviously in a state of halfway repair, but uh, I'm kind of drawn to the shapes here. Um, the very basic shape of the tree next to the kind of um, unique outline of the house, um, old and new type of structures put together. Um, the big, big sky above it. Um, I might crop it vertically, not sure, maybe emphasize the sky, treat it very abstractly. But uh, I'm working on an 8x10, and I'll just get going. Yeah, I'm going to go with an 8x10, or a uh, vertical. Got some yellow on my palette from yesterday. And I think I'm going to enjoy the outcome of having the the yellow in here. It's kind of a hot um, dry day. And I think that will emphasize the the heat. I'm placing these elements closer together than they really are. I'm also um, increasing the height, the comparative height of the house compared to its width. Just to just the design choice. Just trying to get all the the lines and things to work together. Increase the size of the mountains back there a little bit, I think. Eh, maybe not that much. So, if I stick with this, then that means the the sky and the relative height of the tr of the tree, you know, kind of work together to to create the main statement. And I have to decide if that's really what I want. If I bring the house off even further, that will even increase that further. Now if I do that, that's fine, but I have to do something to the sky to make it interesting. That doesn't mean I necessarily have to make anything up. It just means I have to take what's really there and make it more interesting <laughs> than just a sky. And I'm not so sure that that's the right way to go on this painting. You know, on second thought, I am going to stick with it. I'll just change a little bit. I'll go with a yellow sky to begin with. I'll paint into that later. So as I look here, it, I mean, it's not like a bright yellow or anything by any means, but there is that yellow kind of dustiness to everything here today. I think it'll make it more interesting. It'll make the house smaller and I think also the tree. Make them both a little bit smaller so that the sky will um, so it'll be more obvious, I guess, that the sky is the the main shape of the painting. I'm more interested in the design than about the details of it. So, hey, that's fun to see that horseback rider coming down the street.
Okay, I've got to get these dark colors in there. I really like the drabness and dustiness of, of the colors today. You can see that I'm moving things over a little bit to the left. I'd really like these, the tree and the house to work together as one shape. Which adds strength to the painting. This is very much going to be a um, oh, what's the term? I can't think of it at the moment. It's gonna be more about the um, the values than about the color. And I add a chimney there because that's what will eventually be there. <laughs> so I'm taking a little bit of design liberties as far as architecture goes. I'll paint this in in gray first, since it's on my brush mostly. Also to remind myself a little bit to not be overly concerned about the color right now. It's an interesting shape, that tree. See how it's kind of an S-curve, and you'll see it goes like this over the top. And then this on the left and that on the right. Poking out, we got this S-curve. I'm emphasizing it, obviously. But that is, you know, finding, oops, sorry. Finding that um, main shape is, I think, at the, at the essence of, of capturing what some people term as the personality of a subject. It's really just the unique shape that kind of sets that apart, makes it, makes it recognizable. next to a, something else. Okay, I'm gonna stand up back for a minute, look at it for myself, see if I like the design. Because at this point, it's gonna be harder to change if I decide to change it later. Okay, I like that. So into color we go. Green, yellow, white, a little bit of brown in there. Make sure I don't get too bright. Now these aren't going to be the same color, but since this foreground is still green-ish, I'm gonna go ahead and put it down as a layer, and then I'll paint into it afterwards, which will add a depth to it. I need the tree in the background there, just something to break it up. Okay, at this point, and go back into this color and you know hit the little nuances that are there. Start to indicate the, the layers of different uh, different plants and different elements are, that are that are occurring there. Let's put a little bit of blue in there. I don't want this much blue showing through in the final thing, but it might be nice to have a little bit show th show through. Add some brown. Start to darken it up a little bit. So everything is affected by the light that's around it. And the light kind of wraps around the tree, if that makes any sense. It, uh, it wraps around the roundness of it. So the edges of trees are a lot more soft than 
the edges of of like a house. Some more brown, some yellow. It's quite a dark color in real life, but there's also, I don't know, I just want to preserve that dusty feeling. So I'm going to paint everything just a little bit lighter than I actually see it. Some dark accents down there that I see. And just that one dark area should be enough dark to really ground that, that tree. You know, makes it gives it that feeling of being you know part of the earth and attached to the earth. Okay, I'll move back into the brownish gray family. Let's get a few of those dark spots. It's be a little bit warmer, so brown and yellow. Should go under there. Let's see. I'm trying to be I'm trying to be quick and impressionistic about it. I'm trying not to allow it to get too detailed. Let's add some lighter this brown. Oh. Need to fix the value of that roof line before I get too far along. No, it's it's a little too dark, so I'll go a little bit lighter. Oh, that's yeah. I remixed my color, trying to make it cooler, and ended up making it darker too. I can feel ants crawling on me. Just a minute. <laughs> One of the pleasures of plein air painting. <laughs> There we go. A little bit warmer there. Like that. It's amazing how many color changes there are to be found if you're looking for them in a single swath of of, uh, of a single color. You know, I mean, all of the the insulation, for example. And the tar paper on the on the roof it is all the same color, more or less. But if I'm looking for it, I can kind of pick up little reflected lights and uh, just different colors that aren't quite obvious. But if I set out trying to trying to look for them, then I can find them. I say I, but I mean any artist. blue and black to make a, a bluish gray. I could do it with either just black and white or just blue and white. It wouldn't really matter. I just know that, knew that I wanted it to be a little bit you know, not not a intense pure light blue but more of a muted toned down blue. Hence the black. Get a darker green mixed up here. So green, yellow, black, brown, 
kind of just creating a, a dull, dark gray that's a little bit on the warm side. Or dull, dark green is what I meant to say. Slightly more pure green for a second. So black, or sorry, so green, white, and yellow. And that'll be the light of these trees. And purple, green, and white mixed into that, you know, stuff that was all already in my brush for the darker parts of these little... Oh, they're not really. Well, I guess they are trees. Trees slash bushes or weeds or stand of weeds, whatever they are. Which is funny, I should know they are because they're in my yard, but I don't see them from this angle very often. Okay, now down here, I need to make sure that I keep the values correct. So you can see just in this area, so obviously the, the sky and the mountains are part of the the great white expanse of, of brightness <laughs> in the sky. And this is the darkest. That's next. And this and this are the same um, value, more or less. They're very close to each other. And this is more intense, and this is um, more yellow-green. Although I have to be careful because that's also in the distance. And uh, this is more brown. More of a brown-green. And it's um, far lighter. Than, than these. So, after studying it a little bit, I can just you know, make sure that that hierarchy of values um, stays intact. And at that point, it, it kind of doesn't matter what color it is, you know? I mean, the temperature matters, how How warm or cooler it is compared to the other things around it. But even then, that can even be um, sort of invented a little bit. Still has to be consistent with the lighting. Okay, I'll get this weeping willow in there. Really just impressionistic. This is almost a documentary style painting, just, just because of its subject. I mean it I'm painting it because of the design, but it's not necessarily what I'd call a beautiful subject and yet from an artistic standpoint there's there's a lot going on here that that is kind of well beautiful because it's there because it's because it's an accurate representation of the type of light that exists on a day like today so it has some oh I don't know I don't want to Say that it's better or worse than any anything else, but it maybe takes some more discerning eye to see the beauty in something like this, perhaps. Or at least it takes a little bit of a little bit more careful appreciation of what is going on. And a lot, a lot of times, things like that have more have more staying power. Um, you know, a painting that's bright and colorful, too bright and colorful, and it, you know, will will have the effect of definitely wowing you at first, but then it it runs the risk of 
I was looking garish over the years. And that's not to say that a, a f picture of flowers or something can't be have stain power. It certainly can, but it depends on how it's painted. It, uh, there's a accurate, uh, naturalistic way to paint flowers, and then there's a, a garish way to paint flowers. And I prefer the more naturalistic approach to any subject. A little bit more gray, perhaps, a little bit more brown. A little bit of harsh reality, I guess, which makes it more real. Because reality does have those little imperfections that, that to me, make it more beautiful. You know, not every flower that's bright pink is going to be seen by your eyes as bright pink, especially if you're seeing it from a distance. You know, things are are seen through um, through layers of atmosphere, through dust and pollen that's in the air. And, uh, that's just the, the reality that we live in. And, and frankly, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. If everything was bright and colorful, then in essence, nothing would be. And I think it would tire our eyes out and it'd tire our brains out. And we just, we need things to be different. We need to be able to see things um, you know, bright when we get up close and intense and then be able to back off and, and appreciate it in a different way. Appreciate the, the lack of intensity and, and the beauty that comes with that. Now I actually really can love a painting more. I get far more excited about a, a painting that that shows the grayness of a day as opposed to trying to really um, you know intensify everything. I can definitely enjoy a painting of flowers, but it's, even then it's, it's held back. There are colors that are held in reserve and never used. And because of that, I, I can quietly appreciate it. Now this little tree that I put in there is not there, but I have trees right here that I can borrow from. I can, um, paint their colors and values. Okay. Now this this tree, I'm very happy with the with the house now. It's I'd say very accurate. Although of course it's impressionistic. It's not detailed, but it is certainly accurate. Should we get closer? And there's a big difference between detail and accuracy. Monet's paintings are not detailed. But uh, they're accurate and they're within themselves. In other words, I could paint this this whole painting more yellow than it is in real life 
which is what I've done. And yet it's still very accurate. And there's something kind of exciting about painting, about knowing that, knowing full well that it's not absolutely picture perfect, um, you know, compared to reality. Um, it's not like taking a photo, but uh, you know, the sky is not that yellow. But something kind of exciting about it. It's almost like seeing it through a filter, but it's through the filter of my mind, which I don't know, there's something very human about that. And, um, not something you can quite duplicate with a Instagram filter <laughs> or something like that. Whew, I am. It is a hot day. Starting to feel it for sure. I've not actually washed my brush at all, or even wiped it off. Um, and I just haven't found a need to yet in this painting. But once I go back, once I go into the sky here in a minute, I'll need to need to wash the brush off for sure, because I've got all this green and gray in the in the brush right now, which. Actually, it's working out just fine for for all the colors that I've put in so far. Okay, I'm really excited to hit that spot right there. All right, time to wash my brush real quick. All right, my brush is clean. My palette is clean, so I'm first thing I'm gonna do is get it dirty again. <laughs> A little bit of purple, purpley blue. I didn't wash off the palette completely. I mean, I wiped it pretty good, but there's still a little bit of residual paint on there. And that drab color I've been working with this whole time. painting the mountain. I'm making that just a hair darker than it really is. But I think in context, you know, compared to the rest of the painting, it, its value here works out to be just fine. If you go too light, you can't really get much color in there. And there isn't much color in those mountains today. I think there are some forest fires in neighboring states or somewhere. Um, but it, it truly really is smoky, but I, I, I want to get some color back there. So I'm painting them just a hair darker, just so I can get that color. All right. Dip into the white again. I, I haven't washed off the brush because I kind of scraped it like that so there's not much left on there. And then I've gone with a really thick white. And there's so much white here that it won't really have a tendency to mix into the color that I had on the brush before. And that's how I can get away with not washing or wiping off my brush very often. Okay, I'm just painting pure white. It's dirty white, but still. And then just slowly mixing it in, creating this gradient. I don't really want it to be white though. Let me see. Just go with a little more yellow than that. A 
I'll stay with a nice light color, but but keep it in the ob obviously yellow realm. Oh, a little too too yellow, although I kind of like that, you know. I like that. I'm gonna keep it. In fact, I'm gonna repeat that over here. That was a mistake, but I, I really am fond of that. Let me put that over here. If you make a mistake and then decide to keep it, it's not a mistake anymore. Hmm. That's fun. I really like that. The reason I'm liking that so much is because it's not something I would have normally done on purpose. Therefore, I wouldn't have done it. Ever. So, I just discovered a new thing you know, after painting for what I consider a pretty long time. What's it been? 25 years, probably. No, more than that. 27 years. Anyway. Yeah, I'm still, still definitely learning, that's for sure. Okay, I'm almost there. Let me wash off my brush again, or at least wipe it. I'm gonna get a little bit more color in that sky, besides just that yellow. All right, my camera is indicating that it is overheating. It is a hot day, and I've got it in full sun, and it's running nonstop, so that's, I guess, to be expected. But if it turns off, that's the reason. But I'm almost done anyway. All right, I've just mixed up a nice bluish color, pretty pure. Just gonna indicate that in a very spotty way, um, which also repeats, you know, this accidental thing down there. But um, I, I've always kind of liked doing skies this way. It is a way, a method that I don't know. <laughs> some might call it gimmick, but it's not. I'm not doing it to. You know, get attention or whatever. I'm just doing it because I like to see both of those colors together, side by side. It kind of makes it dance and sing visually. It's um, something that the French Impressionists and Post-Impressionists did frequently. And uh, a lot of my favorite regional um, Impressionists do it too. See, and and visually it, it it melds together from a distance anyway, and it creates that that amazing phenomenon that this guy uh, does all the time, which is that uh, they somehow you can mix two colors and yet not get a mixture of them. So this doesn't look blue; it just looks, or sorry, it doesn't look green, which is what blue and yellow mixed together would be. So it's not mixed together, it's just, it's blue and yellow at the same time without being green. And you'll see that a lot with sunsets, it'll go from yellow or orange to blue without ever going into green or without creating a muddy color, which is what you'd get if you were to try to mix those colors with uh, pigment. Just a very interesting phenomenon that happens in nature all the time. And, um, as far as I've experienced, this tends to be the best way to to capture that. That's a little bit too light. All right, I am done. I'm just going to sign it. I have sharpened the end of this little signature brush. Um, sometimes I like to scratch the signature in rather than paint it in. Uh, it just kind of depends on my mood. Depends on what I 
think might look good on the painting. I never want the signature to stand out too much. All right. Well, I'm far more pleased with this painting than I... I don't know if I expected it to not be pleasing, but of course I wanted it to be good, but there are some fun things that happened here that I think are unexpected and fun. And I think it's quite accurate. And I've turned a maybe not quite so beautiful thing into a beautiful thing. At least in my opinion. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this, hope you've learned something, and I hope overall that you've been inspired to, if not paint, then at least to look for the beauty in unexpected places. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks for joining me. Bye.